Welcome to another 40k St Andrews Battle Report. Today I have my Gene Steeler Colts taking on Yarrow's Iron Hands in a Maelstrom of War mission. Today we welcome Yarrow back to the channel. Say hello. Hi again. <laughs> this time he hasn't brought his incredibly lucky Harlequins, but hopefully he's not as lucky Iron Hands to the table. And we're going to be playing the Visions of Victory. Maelstrom mission, which is where you draw four cards a turn, but the twist is for each card you draw two and your opponent has to pick one for you. So let's take a look at the armies that are going to be running today. Here we have 1750 points worth of Gene Steeler Colts, consisting of two battalions and a vanguard detachment. On the left we have our first battalion, which is Rusted Claw, and leading that I have a Jackal Alphys and a Magus who has Might from Beyond and Mass Hypnosis. I've got two Broodbrother squads, with each with a Mortar, a unit of 10 Neophyte Hybrids with two Mining Lasers and two Grenade Launchers, and a unit of 10 Neophyte Hybrids with Shotguns and two Flamers. I've also got a unit of Italian Jackals with Shotguns and four Demo Charges, and a wolf quad with an Italian incinerator. And to round this off, because I had the points to spare, a scout sentinel with a missile launcher. In the middle, we have a battalion, which is Cult of the Four-Armed Emperor and also the Vigilus Deliverance Brood Surge detachment. So I have a Patriarch, who's my Warlord, and has the uh, Mental Onslaught and Mind Control powers along with two familiars, the Amulet of the Void Worm, which prevents enemy overwatch and gives me plus one save to range weapons, and Alien Majesty, which gives me plus three inches on my aura. I have a Primus with the Focus of Adoration Warlord trait, thanks to the Brood Coven stratagem. I also have an Acolyte uh, Icon Ward, who is the Augur of the Insurgent Warlord trait, thanks to the Vigilus Field Commander stratagem, and he also has the Banner of the Emperor Ascendant to give me plus one strength. I have a Clamavis for my Elite's Choice, and I have three units of Acolyte Hybrids, three units of 15, one with two Rock Saws, two Rock Drills and a Cult Icon, one with four Rock Cutters and a Cult Icon, and one with two Rock Drills. And then finally on the right, I have my Vanguard Detachment, with a Magus with a familiar, and he has the Inscrutable Cunning Warlord trait, thanks to the Brood Coven. I've got a Nexus to help me regain command points. I've got a Kelomorph, a Clamavis, and a unit of eight Aberrants with Power Picks and Rending Claws. So that's four Warlord traits in this army, three Psychers, a lot of troops units, um, so, for deployment, I'm going to have to keep some of my Acolyte squads on the table, unless I use a stratagem to put them back in reserve, just because of the points values. So that is my Gene Steeler Cults army for this game. Here we have 1750 points of Iron Hands, Yarrow's army featuring quite a few dreadnoughts. Um, so, do you want to take us through what you've got on your list? Uh, of course, uh, so let's start with the Warlord. So, Taplin Dreadnought with uh, Warlord trait, Merciless Logic. Uh, what does that do? Uh, it's like Death to the Force Emperor, but works on Assault Cannon, uh, on Shooting and on Close Combat. Okay, eyes. yep. Uh, then we've got Regular Tech Marine with Servo, servo Harness and a Lightning Claw. Uh, Lieutenants with uh, Teeth of Terror uh, and some bot both pistol. That's solid now, the Teeth of Terror. It's in the Codex, it's plus yeah. three solid weapon. That was the easiest way of mm -hmm. me getting some, some relics. I didn't really know what to take. Uh, three Contempt of Dreadnoughts, all, look, uh, all uh, with uh, Chris uh, Assault Cannons and uh, Close Combat Weapon. Uh, two Venerable Dreadnoughts, one with Plasma Cannon and uh, Close Combat Arm. The other one is with uh, Missile Launcher and Dust Cannon, Thunder Fire Cannon, yep. uh, Five Man Squad with uh, Snipers, no Camo Globes, because they are expensive. Uh, uh, two Five Man Squads of, of Tacticals, one with, with Power Axe, the rest bare bones. 
because weapons are expensive as well. And uh, lastly, uh, cataphractic terminators with a grenade launcher on, on a sergeant and Land Raider. Yes, Land Raider. Uh, yeah, we've not seen quite a few of these units now. Our dreadnoughts, pretty handy thanks to the. Um, for those that don't remember, the Iron Hand successor chapter tactics are a 6 up feel no pain against wounds. 5 plus Overwatch, uh, which is pretty brutal for my close combat army, and vehicles count as double the number of wounds on the damage profile, so these dreads will keep chugging away at full strength till they've got like two wounds left. Well, the dreads don't have a wound profile. Yeah, but Contemptors do. So, oh, Contemptors so do. They, so, they will have. so they'll keep going, as will the Land Raider, which... Uh, not a huge amount of anti tank in my army, but some decent close combat weapons and abilities I can maybe take them out with, so this will be an interesting challenge for the Gene Stealer Cults. I will come back to you with the scenario and the deployment for today. Here's the battlefield for today's game, and I decided to go uh, a bit old school with, we've got a new codex, so let's have some old school terrain. So what I've done is pick out some of the older terrain pieces, such as the orc huts and the three card buildings along here, as well as a hill, some old trees with bases I've made and some of the uh, third edition ruins. I do have a stack of these waiting to be painted up, I think, for my desert board. So we've got some of these. So I won the role for deployment zone, choosing this side with some good line of sight blocking. And Yarrow deployed his army first, so he has the Land Raider with the tactical squad over here, a couple of dreads towards the centre, his attack bike pushing forward with the Thunderfire cannon behind, a big concentration of his dreads over here, his scouts up in the building here, and the tacticals behind to form a screen. Whereas in reply, I deployed some of my blips around my deployment zone, as you can see. For objectives, we have number four up in the bunker here, number one over in the orc shack, number six over here in my deployment zone, number three in the centre here, number two over by the woods, and number five over behind the bastion over here. Or I've got that the wrong way around. That might be the bunker. Bunker bastion, whatever it is. So this could be the Iron Hands, have been sent to investigate why the production of the power plant for the fuel and their energy needs has ceased or has been diverted and have found that the uh, malicious cult have been slowly preparing for this day um, but maybe the Iron Hands have arrived a bit soon so they're going to launch an ambush it's clear that they sense weakness, weakness of corruption and they will purge it <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to get purged so, Yarrow finished the plane first. Um, do you want to take the first turn? Uh, I think so, yes. Yes, I, I would like to. Okay. We will see if I can seize the initiative. I do not. I do not. That's a five. <laughs> so, Yarrow will be taking the first turn. I will mention, for my inscrutable cunning warlord tree, I gained an additional 2 CP. So with the ones I've spent for Relics, the Brood Surge Detachment, the Field Commander, and the Brood Coven, I now have 12 remaining. I'm going to be cheeky. I'm going to spend uh, another one on clandestine goals. So this will mean that I can keep... Uh, Yarrow's chuckling, Yarrow's chuckling there. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> this means that I will keep my Maelstrom cards hidden from Yarrow for the game. So how this is going to interact with the mission rules is we're going to draw four pairs of cards and Yarrow is going to have to randomly select one and hope that he picks a bad one for me. <laughs> so I think against this army, uh, the cult's going to need every advantage it has. So I'm definitely going for clandestine goals to keep them secret and hopefully he won't know what I'm after and what I'm going for in the Maelstrom card. So that's the deployment. We will come back to you with the... First turn movement phase, and then the Gene Stealer Cult's deployment for the Iron Hands on turn one.
Someone for Yarrow, and this is what he drew. No prisoners and blood and guts, so I'm going to give him blood and guts because he's unlikely to get a charge on turn one. Secure objective five and defend objective five. He's sitting on it, so we'll go with secure uh, because that's only one point. Honour the chapter and secure objective two, which is kill a character with a character. Uh, we'll go for honour the chapter because... Uh, Two is over my side of my table, but you can probably get it at some point, whereas that one might be more difficult. And secure one in supremacy. He can achieve both, so let's give him secure one only. So these go to the bottom of the pile. Um, he's probably going to get no prisoners because... Uh, so that's why I didn't pick it, because um, I really can't hide everything. So, Blood and Guts, Secure Objective 5, Honour the Chapter, and Secure 1. He's probably going to get both of these. Uh, he's unlikely to get the other two. So, if he gets First Strike, which is entirely likely, that's going to be three points. So, we'll see what Yarrow does with his movement phase and how I can deploy to counter. Movement phase for the Iron Hands, the tactical squad getting out of the Land Raider to secure this objective. One of the Contemptors moving up, the other Dreadnoughts moving up on the other flank, uh, the Lieutenant and the uh, Lieutenant moving up and the Tech Marine advancing, doing no damage yet. Rest of the squad staying in place to sort of block off my Deep Strike choices. I then went to deploy. Uh, deploying the Nexus first and then using his ability to move another marker to get the four units behind the cover here. So I have a unit of Neophyte Hybrids, the Magus, the Jackal Alphas and the Nexus. Uh, Scout Sentinel next to them and then unfortunately just having to go into cover and hope for the best. Uh, squad of Neophyte Hybrids and the two Brood Brothers squads. I spent a CP on Return to the Shadows to put a unit of quad bikers, acolyte hybrids and the aberrants back into reserve. Um, I had to deploy these simply for points, values. Um, I didn't have enough in my rusted claw battalion to keep everything in reserve. So unfortunately, uh, I think these brood brothers are gonna bear the brunt of the enemy firepower on turn one which is unfortunate, but that's the way it goes. I didn't get the CP back thanks to the Nexus ability, so I am down to 10, but I think that's what I'll use for now. So with that, we'll move on to the shooting phase for turn one on the Iron Hands, which, if the four-armed emperor is good to me, will not be as punishing. There is no four-armed emperor. He's... There is only one emperor, and... He will punish the wicked. <laughs> so where are we going to start? <laughs> All right. Uh, let me just have a look. Uh, so let's start. Uh, there is no characters here. I, I can fire with my snipers. No, nothing in line of sight. So they look wicked. So I'm gonna blast them with my snipers first. Okay. <laughs> We're going to start with the snipers firing five shots into the neophyte hybrids opposite them. And to make them even better, I'm gonna make this Renault over here chapter master. So, there will be bubble of rolling six up, uh, sorry, ones to, to hit. Oh, not chapter master, you mean... Um, yeah, it's called... Uh, yeah, that one. Uh, Wisdom of the Ancients. Wisdom of the Ancients, that's it. So, re-rolling ones, they should be in range. So, they are very wise now, and being wise... Hold they... on. Do I get your CP back? Yeah, you try it. Nope, I do not. So, just three hits. Yep, threes to win, sixes are mortal. So that's three wounds, 80 minus one because those are heavy weapons and they we are devastating. Are heavy weapons, but I will be getting a four up save thanks to my cult creed, giving me plus one in addition to plus one in cover. Awesome. So I'll be getting four up saves with these guys. And I feel one. Yeah. yeah, unfortunately, the assault cannons are gonna shred these guys because of the doctrines, they're now minus two. Yes. Meaning I don't get my bonus, but so I'll be on six up saves for them. Right. Who's shooting next? Uh, so next we are gonna use my chaplain dreadnought because he's chaplain, so he has to fire. He will, I think he only has this squad over here in range, so he range? 24 inches. Yeah, he's in. So he will uh, use a another stratagem to ignore movement penalties. Yep, so that so is whatever uh, it's called. Um, before it was machine and party, now it's... Big guns never tire. Big guns never tire, yes. So another CP, do I get it back? Yeah. 
I need a six for because I don't have my characters, other characters on the table. All right. So what's he got? Uh, Storm water and uh, assault cannon. So. But oh, that's an I should have deployed them further back actually, but I wanted to get the cover, so I could have uh, blocked your, your shooting. But we'll see what he can so do. First, assault cannon. Uh, remember that with his world of trade, he gonna uh, generate an extra attacks on sixes. Oh yes. So he's hitting on threes. Two. Two. Because I ignore his movement penalty. Is for, he for world uh, for for Saturday. And two extra shots. For yeah. Sixes. Yep. So that's. Six shots, eight hits. I love this game Makes sometimes. <laughs> Wounding on twos. Alright, so that's all yours. So eight wounds. All eight wounds, wounds, eight six up saves required for the uh, neophyte hybrids because, as I said, they don't get their cult feed bonus because of doctrines. Um, pretty much rendering this cult fairly useless with heavy weapons, but eight six up saves. I do make two, so that is. Six are dead, uh, so this squad's taking a bit of punishment. We will do the rest of the shooting off camera, and I'll let you know how much I have left, if anything, to survive after this turn. Rest of the shooting done, as you can see, fairly decimating the army. So the squad over here, there was only a couple remaining. The two dreadnoughts only had range uh, for this squad, so they were butchered, giving them first strike. The other Dreadnought and uh, a couple of the Dreadnoughts in the attack bike firing at this squad, whittling them down to the Mortar remaining. So this squad is gone because I'll fail the morale. Oh. I'm not spending 2 CP on that. Uh, the Land Raider actually firing in at the Mortar but failed to finish it off, but he didn't need to. Um, just the heavy bolters. The last cannons killing. Four guys. Four guys in this squad after Yarrow's great rolling keeps going. And his Thunderfire Cannon targeted this squad back here with the Tremor Shell stratagem. Actually, he wanted to cut down their movement. So they lost three thanks to the minus one to wound. So he will get first strike. I'll do my morales in a second. Ah, well, I'll do them now. So I lost three in this squad. They are leadership eight. Enough. They are fine. And I lost four in this squad, and they are also leadership eight, and they survive as well. So at the end of his first turn, he's going to score secure objective five, he's going to score secure objective one, and he is scoring first strike, giving him three points. Do you wish to discard either of these? Uh, I guess I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna keep both of them. They okay. That's fine. He's going to keep on your chapter. So, um, annoyingly, because I didn't go first, I am going to have to suffer the firepower yet again with only very few units in the table. So, what we're going to do is uh, draw the cards. Uh, I don't think this is going to be a high scoring turn for me, unless I get incredibly lucky. Uh, but, yeah, this is sometimes what happens with the cult if you don't get the first turn. I'm going to see what I can do to survive the enemy firepower and hopefully on turn 2 hit back big. So these are the four pairs of cards that I've drawn for my first turn. Yarrow, if you want to pick a card from each pair and still don't look at them because I still don't have to show you what they are. <laughs> That's awesome. So Imperial Tarot is saying that this card is very good for you. Yep. So you not, will not get this. This one looks quite awesome as well. Definitely not for you. And this one is upside down, which is deadly. So it's going to be for, for you. Yep. And last time, they are both quite good. So I'm going to give you this one. <laughs> okay, so I'll show you which cards I have got. All right, I will go outside. That's fine. So we have this. Uh, this one, unlikely, this one, also unlikely, and this one, impossible as well. So, uh, an awesome first hand for me. And um, we'll come back with what I decide to do in my movement phase in turn one. End of my movement phase, and that was entirely too quick. <laughs> so, uh, pulling back the Brood Brothers over here, to hopefully get them out of range of some of the enemy firepower. Moving my Sentinel 
and my Jackal Alpha Shrine. So with my plus one hit ability, I'm going to target this Dreadnought here. And he is in range to try and snipe possibly the Tech Marine. The Nephite Hybrid's moving up a little because of the Tremor Shells and the Magus climbing up to get a smite off. Uh, keeping a few behind to save from any Terminators that jump in just to make this charge a little bit bigger if he does wipe them out. So we'll move on to the Psychic phase and I'm going to go with a smite on the Magus which will target this Dreadnought here. And a five, that's enough. I have no psychic powers. D3 Mortal Wounds for three. So you get three six up saves. Annoyingly, I forgot I could only cast one power, so it might have been worth going with Mass Hypnosis, but then I wouldn't have passed that. But it will score me Master of the Warp, which was one of my cards. So, with that done, we will go into my, uh, again, rather meagre shooting phase. So we will start with the Neophytes into the Dreadnought that's wounded over here. So I am getting plus one to hit, but minus one because I moved. So, four ups for the mining lasers. No, that's a double one. Uh, combat point? Uh, how many wins has he got left? Uh, seven. You're not gonna kill him. Seven. But you can put the rocket into it. But I could maybe hurt him. Uh, nah, do you know what? It's not even worth it. The odds of doing it are so slim. Um, yeah, it's not worth the two CP. It's not worth the CP, I don't think. I'd rather save him for later. Grenades. One hit, uh, and that fails to wound on a one. Yeah, phenomenal shooting phase. The missile from the Scout Sentinel will go into him, and he misses as well. Uh, in that case, let's put the mortar into the tactical squad here, and we'll put the auto guns that have range into the not because I don't believe they have range on the tactical squad. Mortar gets d6 shots for four, hitting on fives. One hit, wounding on fours, no wounds. Wow, that's a, an amazing first turn so far. And then four auto guns, or las guns I think they are on the squad actually. Two hits, sixes, one wound actually on Slow. the dread. Can he survive this? No, he cannot. Feel no pain. Oh, hey, so the last guns actually taken down to six wounds. <laughs> Annoyingly, had any of the mining lasers hit. So, um, that is a rather lacklustre turn for me. What I will do... So I score one point, so at the moment it's three points to one. I will ditch overwhelming firepower. How oh, so about your snipers? You haven't fired Oh yes, that, you're or? right. Sorry, my sniper will fire at the... Uh, let's go for the Tech Marine. So he's hitting on a 2, he did move, but because of his Cult Creed, he hits, and then he doesn't wound. So, phenomenal first turn there for the Cult. Uh, As I said, where is your 4 arm Emperor now? There's only one Emperor, and weakness will be punished. So we are ditching overwhelming firepower, because there's absolutely no way I'm getting that. We do score Master of the Warp, so at the end of turn 1, it is now three points to one for the Iron Hands. And if I have any models left at the end of this turn, I will be stunned, quite frankly. So we'll go on to Iron Hands turn two. Turn two for the Iron Hands, and these are the two additional cards drawn. Behind enemy line, secure three. I mean, you can do both, in fairness, but I'll give you behind enemy lines, because at least then you have to bring your Terminators in to score it. And here, Advance or Witch Hunter, definitely Advance. <laughs> so, bit of mixed orders here for the Iron Hands. They have Blood and Guts, which I think he's going to struggle to get. Honor the Chapter uh, is, I think, impossible as well. And behind enemy lines in advance, he's not going to get advanced, but he could get behind enemy lines. So hopefully keeping the score low on this turn uh, so that I can punish him in turn two with my reserves. End of the Iron Hands movement phase, turn two. This dredge shuffling up slightly. I deployed him so he'd need an 11 inch charge. 
So I don't think he's going to risk that. It's, it's, you're on the other side, I just moved him slightly. He's, he's not going to charge. Yeah, he's not going to charge. So the other Dreadnought shuffling around a bit. Everyone else pretty much keeping in place. No real damage being healed so far. The end of the phase, the Cataphracty Terminator is arriving beside this squad here. Uh, so scoring him behind enemy lines for a point. No psychic phase, we have a lot of shooting <laughs> against my meagre cult huddled together. These are the, the sacrificial lambs of the army while the um, the big boys come in next turn, hopefully, and cause some devastation. So what are we going to start with in the shooting phase? I will start using my last cannons killing some guys on, on top. <laughs> yeah. Okay, and you're keeping the Devastator Doctrine? Yes, yes, I stay on Devastator Doctrine. Okay, Doctrine. that makes sense given the amount of heavy weapon firepower you have in the army here. So, starting with the Land Raider, Last Cannon, everything into the new fights? Everything into them. <laughs> That's fine. So, so Last Cannons. So, three hits. hits. Twos to obliterate. Yeah, so two will. Two die, die. <laughs> no save, so that's two gone. And the heavy bolter. Uh, oh, only one hit. They have some problem with this heavy bolter. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> Nothing, no wounds, so. Uh, no, so actually not as bad, but I, I think you've got plenty of firepower left to do that. Uh, so we'll do the rest of the firepower off camera and show you what is remaining of the cult after it is done. Tactical squad firing in at the new fights, uh, getting six shots thanks to the bolter discipline, but terrible rolling, so only one wound go through, which I saved. The venerable is now going to overcharge his plasma into my sentinel. So how many shots are we getting? We're getting two shots. Double one, please. That is uh, one for you. So one more wound and one hit. Can I damage you? Yes, it I can. Does uh, that is minus four, so that's not going to be a save for me. And d6 that. Oh no, no sorry, it's only two damage. It's damage, not d6. Yeah. We're thinking. So the sentinel, I believe they start on six, but I'll double check. But anyway, he's taking two wins. Uh, let's see if the rest of the firepower can do any damage. Some more shooting. The dreadnought here managing to wipe out the neophyte hybrids. The Snipers and one of the dreadnoughts down here managing to take out a bunch of the uh, Brood Brothers. The Cataphracty are now going to open up on the Scout Sentinel and he spawned a CP on Fury of the First, giving them plus one to hit. So, this uh, I didn't get the CP back. My Nexus has done nothing at all this game so far, but it's early yet and I still have plenty of CP left to use. So, we're going to be getting uh, 20 bolter shots hitting on twos, thanks to the Fury of the First. Uh, so, this could be trouble for the Sentinel if his wound rolls. Uh, actually, a few ones. So, that's four ones. You're going to be wounded on fives, though. That's right. So, we're hoping for a low roll here. Keep the Sentinel alive. Oh, that is two. Four, six, seven wounds in true Yarrow style. So that's seven wounds with a four up save and four wounds remaining. And I fail four. <laughs> four one. Um, nah, I don't think it's worth the CP. I want to save it in case I explode. Which, <laughs> seriously, could this get any better? Could my rolling get poorer? So I'm going to CP reroll that. Jeez, uh, do I get to keep the CP? No, when I want a 6, I don't get a 6. So I believe that will be one mortal wound to all units nearby. So that will kill him, kill him, and put a wound on him. Wow. Um, so, yeah, turn 2 is shaping up to be just as good for me as turn 1. We have the only units left to fire, uh, we have the Thunderfire Cannon and, and the Attack Bike. So, end of the shooting phase, the Attack Bike managing to kill the last one. He then fired the Thunderfire into my Magus, who took, he only got five shots, four hits, four wounds, and I failed every save. So, he died as well. So, at the end of my second turn, I have two models remaining. Have you ever wanted to just pack in a game before it starts? <laughs> yes, very often I the night. <laughs> so, oh, continuing. I was saying to Yarrow, every time I play Yarrow, he rolls like a boss and I cannot roll for my life. 
So if this continues, I'm going to fail every single charge when I come in. But at the end of your turn, you will score behind enemy lines, taking you to four points. Do you want to discard anything? Yes, I think now it's time for... Uh, stop honoring my chapter. Yes, we'll remove honor the chapter and keep advance and blood and guts. So that takes four points to one, going into the cult turn two. So in my turn two, uh, these are the two that Yarrow drew for me. So this is the four I have in total, uh, meaning I'm going to have to go after some units to try and do some damage here. So we'll come back to you with the movement phase and all the reserves I bring in for the cult on turn two. End of my movement phase, decided to just go for it. The Jackal Alphys moving over towards this objective. Uh, this guy's shuffling in a bit, but that's all I had left on the table. And so reserves, I brought in the split in two, which may not be wise, but there really wasn't many targets over here. I can probably go after the Dread and the Tactical Squad, maybe get into the Land Raider to tie that up and stop me being shot at. Uh, but putting in everything over here really wasn't much use because everything's away. So over here, debated a bit, spent 2 CP on lying in wait to bring in this squad next to the uh, Dreadnoughts here. Nexus didn't give me any back, so he's been useful. The Aberrant's going to go after the Terminators to try and clear them off my back line. The Clamavus and a unit of Acolytes uh, with the rock cutters going after, hopefully after one of the other dreads over here. Thought about putting them in at the tactical marines, but they're really not going to do as much damage as these dreads are. So, I'm hoping for a great turn of charges, otherwise there's going to be some real damage done here, or lack thereof, if I don't do some power. Oh yeah, and my Kellamorph coming in over here to target his tech marine or the attack bike, probably the tech marine, to clear some space around here, which would be nice. Or actually, I could uh, I could send him after the tacticals, actually, yeah, you can. to do some damage. There's no real point killing your tech marine. So yeah, let's we'll deploy him over here and go, we'll measure that up, and we'll go after your tactical squad because there's no real reason to... Uh, Target the Tech Marine. If I can kill the Dreads outright, he can't really do much, and he's got a two up armor save, whereas they're getting a four up. So that will be the movement phase. Uh, for my plus one to hit, I'm going to select this Dreadnought here. So the Jackal Squad will be getting plus one to hit against him here. Start the Psychic phase. We are going to go for a mental onslaught from the Patriarch onto the Dreadnought. And this is a warp charge value of 6. Ow. That goes off. So what's your leadership? Uh, I believe it's 8. And mine is 11. So the way this works is we roll off. If you roll a 6, the power stops. Uh, but if I beat your score, you suffer mortal wounds. And we keep rolling till I fail. Right. So you need at least a 4. I, th I think a 8. Yes, you need at least a 4 to stop me doing a mortal wound. Alright, so with that I'm gonna pay one command point to give him 5 up invulnerable against uh, mortal wounds. That's fine, so do I get the CP back? Yes. Finally, I Fine do, up. I get one. So he's paid the one CP to um, give him a 5 up save against mortal wounds, so your first roll... Sorry man. <laughs> first roll blocks it. Um, okay. Sorry man. Good round, good round. So great success there, we'll then go with a mind control on the Dreadnought where using one of my familiars and that fails, wow, great start so far uh, Next point. up, no it's not worth the command point Next up we'll go for a smite from the uh, Magus which will hit the Dread. The reason the Patriarch didn't smite is it would hit the tacticals and I don't want them removing casualties to stop me getting in range so a smite wow. does go off and does one mortal wound, so Can I let's see Yarrow roll a no six. No. no, so he takes one wound. You're down to five. I was hoping to kill him off, but uh, it's not going to happen. And I may as well use my Primus 
Uh, sorry, my mag is familiar, and we'll go from Might From Beyond on this Acolyte squad here. Which casts as well. So this squad gets plus one attack and plus one to their strength, which should help me out against the Dreadnought. So, rather lacklustre psychic phase, I did get off um, Mental Onslaught, but Yarrow's first row was a six, so that didn't help matters. So, Might From Beyond will be good on them. As I was saying off camera, if I don't make every single charge of this turn, I'm going to be in big trouble. So, start of the shooting phase, we will start with... Uh, We'll spend 2 CP on extra demolitions and the rusted claw stratagem, giving me plus 1 to hit and plus 1 to wound. And we're going to put, uh, it's, probably, it's probably not worth splitting fire, but, because then I'm a, if I do kill them both, I'm out of range with this squad's charge. So we'll just put it into this one here. So this is going to be 4d6 demolition charges into the Dreadnought, the Contemptor. That is 10, 15. So that is 15 attacks hitting on twos because of the bonus to the Stratagem and from the Jackal Alphas. So hitting on twos. Uh, only one. And it's going to be wounding on twos, again, thanks to the bonus of the stratagem. And that is 13 wounds, so 13 five up invulnerables. Uh, or lack thereof, if you would please, Jaro. <laughs> I will find my best. So. Uh, I will roll this one. No, so I've got to say that's a good number. That's. Two, four, six out of thirteen. That's almost fifty percent. That was good choice. That you that haven't split the fire. Very good. So these are going to be DT damage and contemptors of how many wounds? Ten. Ten wounds. And before I forget, we'll put the incinerator into the other. We'll put no. We'll put the incinerator into the same dread just okay. in case I fail to finish them off. So D3 damage, yeah, he's dead. Ah, uh, feel no pains. I will be. Oh yeah. So <laughs> three, six, nine, twelve. 14, 15, 16, 16. feel no pains <laughs> to make. And given your role in Yarrow, <laughs> this, yeah. isn't, this isn't a sure thing. It's not something I'm not known of doing. Yep. He makes one, two, three. <laughs> so not enough, that not is. Enough. He is dead. I think that was worth the CP. Does Can he I explode? explode? He does! <sighs> oh, this oh. is. We'll need to check what this does. But um, yeah, so the incinerator doesn't fire, and the explosion does goes off, probably hitting quite a few euros, so not yeah. terrible. Uh, we'll do the damage. Well, he's choosing to reroll that because he's going to hit both his contemptor and his warlord, so he's choosing to reroll. Yeah. And oh yeah, when you reroll an explosion, <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> okay, so good start for the cult. Um, I believe you you taken over a command point, so I will just drop mine. Yep, that's fine. So, uh, I don't get to roll because I've already recovered one this turn. And we will see what the rest of my shooting, if any, can do. Oh no, the Kelomorph! Let's put the Kelomorph. We'll do the pistols off camera. But this guy actually gets some uh, decent firepower. Although he better do it because the first game I used him in, he fluffed entirely, did nothing. So, six attacks into the tactical marines, hitting on twos. Uh, yep, re-rolling, and then that's another five shots, because he hit five times. Re-rolling ones, because he hit. And then that is strength four, so wounding on fours. That is uh, average. Yeah, better than average. So that's six wounds at minus one. All right, so four at armor says. So there will be one, some two, suffering. Three, four. So four, four of the five are dead. Uh, what's, uh, how many wounds are you? Oh, sorry, it's two damage apiece. All right. So, so yeah, that's better for me. I will roll four uh, all together and roll any success. Yeah. So one. we'll that one. Oh, come on, Yaro. You and your sixes. So three die from yeah. the Kelomorph. We will do some more pistol shots and come back and see if any damage can be done to these dreadnoughts. Rest of the shooting phase, a few pistols going on here, did a wound, but he saved. Over here, 
did the wounds on this dreadnought, but again he made his armour save. So we're going to start, I think we will start with the important charges. So I'm going to put the... Oh, you're wounding on a 5 in Overwatch, aren't you? That's it's going to be nasty. Five. So we will start with the Aberrants going into the Terminators. We will roll up the Overwatch, because if I want to use a CP reroll, I think it's going to be here. So we'll start with the Aberrants going into the Terminators. 20 shots, hitting on 5s, thanks to their ability. Uh, Some hits. That's a few, not... Five uh, are doing the business. Yeah, pretty decent, pretty decent. Winning on fours, because I'm toughness that's four with them, thankfully. So, uh, that's three, three wins. So, I am in cover of the forest, I'm touching the base, so four ups, and then five ups. So no, one does die to overwatch. We we'll now need a seven inch charge. Cut the four-armed emperor, giving me plus one to my charge, as does the nearby Clamavis, so I need a seven to get in. And I do an eight, so that's fine. Over here, we're going to put the acolytes into the dreadnought. We'll do the overwatch off camera, but I need to make all of these. And a 12, that's enough to get in. Over here, we are going to start with the patriarch going into the tactical marines so this doesn't allow you to fire overwatch That's um true. yeah i think i want him over <laughs> there rather than going after the dreadnought you can multi charge just in case you <coughs> so the dreadnought there. does need well it's nine inches either way I in mean, all honesty would be more than yeah it's more than nine but i'm I think I'd rather have him over in the safety and pile these guys up. Yeah. So this will be an 8 inch charge because he does not get the cult creed, but he does get the bonus from the Clavis and he stops you from firing overwatch. That is a... let's CP this because I haven't used one yet. So I need a 4 or more to get him in. And he ah, does nice. just enough to get him in. This Acolyte squad on the right We'll go into the tactical squad. That's a seven. That's enough, thanks to their creed bonuses. And this neophyte squad, sorry, this acolyte squad will go into the dreadnought. Again, we will do the Overwatch off camera, but they will also need a seven. They nice. do. They make a seven. So a rather successful turn of charges, which is exactly what I need. We'll put the acolyte hybrid. Uh, We'll see if he can go in as well to the tactical squad. Uh, fails, but he gets a reroll thanks to his own bonuses. And he fails that as well. Um, the Primus will probably hold... Nah, we'll see if the Primus can get in as well. So he needs a 7, which he fails. He doesn't get a reroll because he's not doesn't get it as part of the Brood Surge. And I'm going to leave the Magus behind as well. So we'll resolve the Overwatch. I will move my Chargers and see what I can do. I actually might have a look at the stat profile of the Kelomorph and see if it's worth charging him in as well to try and finish off these tacticals. So I'll have a look at the stats and we'll let you know how I get on there. Overwatch Fire lost three in this squad thanks to the uh, firepower of the Dreadnought. Stringing them back so that I'm in range of the Primus. I forgot to say, my Primus, I'll use his ability on this Dreadnought to give them rerolls one to wound. Over here, as you saw, lost one Aberrant. Also lost one Acolyte. And also made the charge with the Kelomorph to get him in. So hopefully he will survive the Power Axe attacks. <laughs> we shall see. Um, yeah, all the characters over here. I think we will start the fight phase with the... Aberrants into the Terminators. Start the fight phase. We're going to start with the Aberrants going into the Terminators. There are seven remaining. I lost one to Overwatch. So these will be 14 power pick attacks hitting on threes. Oh, that's not too bad. Nice. We will be wounding them on threes as well. Aye, 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 that's brutal. That's pretty good. Two, four, six. That is seven four up in vulnerable saves. And I will also get my rending claw attacks back as well. So four ups, I save some of them. So, so four go through. Yeah. 
first one kills one. And I feel no pains. Oh yeah, sorry, you feel no pains. Forget about them. Uh, one. He makes one, so second one does two again. Can I roll double sixes? No, nope. not really. One dies. Next one does two damage. Feel no pains. Uh, I will roll that one. Yeah, that's cocked. No. Nope. Nope. And the fourth die. one does two again. Ah, precision attacking. Yes. Oh, Yarrow, you're killing me with your funeral pain. So out of eight, that was what? Four made? No, <clears> just three. three. Still good. So uh, yeah. two die and one is in a wound. Yes. Two, four, six. And now my rending claw attacks. This happened last time I played our hands. He would not stop rolling his funeral pains. It is very punishing. Uh, so hitting on threes with the rending claws. I do like you get the bonus attacks because they have so few. Wounding on three sixes are rending. So that is one rending. So one four up save and six three up saves. So four up save. He makes. And three ups. Three up save. Uh, you failed two, so, so feel no pains. Feel no pain. Single damage? Yes, single damage. So nope. again, this one. So Three Go. Terminators are dead, and one is on a one. wound. Unfortunately, I do not have a fight again strategy with them, which I would rather like for these guys, but oh, if it wasn't for your few no pains, the squad would be wiped. I know hands. The it's power of brutal. Bionics. <laughs> so, next combat. Uh, I'm gonna interrupt, because I've got Sneaky Pan. He's gonna spend two CP to interrupt. I am going to spend 3 CP on a plan generations in the making, That's which is basically the cult version of Agents of Vet. Some cheesy. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, I block it. So you're not allowed to interrupt. Can I, uh, you keep the CP, and that costs me three. So I'm down to three, right. and you have three remaining. Yeah. So we're equal in CP, but you cannot interrupt. Um, so we will do the next combat. Over here, I was going to say I should charge the land raid as well, but I couldn't. Uh, we will go with the Acolytes to start with, so I will pile them in and do my attacks. Yeah. Next attacks, we're going to start with the uh, Patriarch, because if he does, if I, he can kill the tactical squad, then I can pile in and do my consolidate move into the land raider to stop him shooting, and also to stop me being shot at which would be quite nice. So we will do the Patriarch's attacks. Six attacks, hitting on twos. Nice. Wounding on threes with re-rolls. That's some dead particles. Well, re-rolls. So two are a flat s minus six AP three Sorry. damage, and the rest are D3. All right, so I'll roll the rest. Uh, well, the rest of D3 damage. Uh, how long, how long oh no, time? six up saves, you're right, six up. Uh, I haven't rolled any sixes. You make none, and then damage will be... We'll just roll these together. So, two ones and two twos. So, right, you so can start two I'll, ones with your funeral pain. So, uh, two ones. Yep. Uh, no. No, two die. Uh, then uh, two, two lots tools. of two. So, reloading any successes. Reloading success. No, nope. so that's four dead, and then uh, two, they've got three. three. Uh, no, nope. so the Patriarch manages to wipe out the squad. That's brutal. Yep, he's good. And we'll, what we'll do is then is pile in the Acolytes, and then do my consolidations as well. So the Acolytes pile in to the Land Raider to stop shooting, although I couldn't get round, so we'll be able to fall back. Um, but at least shut down its firepower. Oh no, if I can shut it... Um, yeah, if he falls back, I'll still be getting shot at, but I don't think it was possible for me to wrap him round uh, with my movement. We'll then move on to these guys, the Acolytes and the uh, Dreadnought. I'm not going to pay to... So the Deliverance Bridge Surge does give me a plus one to wound stratagem, which I actually might save for the other Dreadnought, because these guys are might from beyond, plus one to hit. Um, so we'll start with the rock cutters, doing uh, hitting on twos, uh, okay. because of the uh, mag primus nearby, re-rolling ones thanks to the cult icon, so all hit, wounding on threes thanks to Mike from beyond, I'm right. strength 10, although it doesn't matter, I was strength 8 anyway, re-rolling ones thanks to the primus, 
so that is five wounds at AP minus four, so five five ups. Uh, so you'll now go save? Uh, of course. <laughs> so that's four damage though, so uh, he's down to one wound does, remaining. Does it do something crazy? Or No, no, it's just four damage. So yeah, uh, you'll get four funeral pains. Uh, I'm just thinking uh, about command pointing because the other guy probably survived this. Yes, I'm gonna CP. Okay, he's gonna reroll one of these. No. Nope, so that's a fail, he's down to 2 CP, yeah. but you get 4 feel no pains. Uh, feel no pains. Uh, that's nope. nothing. He takes 4 wins, that and then no we still have the rock drills as well. So that'll be 6 attacks with the rock drills. Hitting on 2s, re-rolling 1s thanks to the cult icon, which I've only started taking, but I think it's worth that. Wounding on 3s. And re-rolling ones. Uh, so that's four more wounds at minus four, I believe, or three or four. You're getting a five, five up anyway. Five in honorary ball, so two goes through. Two goes through, it's only single damage. So... Final pines then. I need double six. No! No. So the Redemptor is dre dead. Does Sorry. he explode? No. No, he doesn't. So he is dead. I will do my consolidation moves. This combat over here, I paid another CP on the stratagem at the start of the phase, first to draw blood, giving them plus one to wound. So my cutters will be wounding on a two plus. The reason I did this is because the cutters are minus one to hit. Uh, so this could potentially be dodgy. So we will do their attacks into the Dreadnought. Eight attacks with the cutters hitting on fours. And re-rolling ones because of the banner, Lucky. which is just as well. <clears throat> yeah. And then these will be wounding on twos because I'm strength eight and plus one to wound. Oh, let's... <clears throat> you haven't used CP this I haven't used the CP. I'm down to two. Let's CP that. So Thanks. yeah, that's three. I've got one remaining and that's going to be three five ups. So five ups over here. <clears throat> nope. So these are D3 each. So two D3. That's four in total. But I will get the rest of my attacks as well. So six at three no pain on those fours. I save one, so, so it's down to seven. Down to seven. I'll do my pylon moves, which I forgot about, and the rest of my attacks with the rending claws. Combat over here, the thanks to the plus one to wound, I was doing rending attacks on a five or a six and wounding on fours. Managing to get through quite a few wound, rending wounds, uh, taking them down to three. My cultist knives then attack, doing five wounds, but he made every save. Uh, so with that, we will do the Kalamorph attacks off camera. We'll do the Dreadnought attacks and the uh, Land Raid attacks off camera. And we'll come back to you for the Terminators to see what damage they can do to the Aberrants. Rest of the combats, the Dreadnought managing to kill off three of this squad, so they'll have four in total. The Kelimor failing to do any damage over here, but then uh, actually taking three wounds, two from the Pyrax, one from the Tactical Marine, and his five up in Von, like a boss, he made them all. Over here, the Land Raider killing one, but I'm immune to morale thanks to Patriarch, so that's not going to do any damage. And we'll come back with the Terminators. Yarrow spending another CP on Fury of the First yes. to be hitting on threes and twos. once more. And twos with his power sword. So, so twos on black and threes on, on green. Which is which? Uh, red. Black's the power sword. Uh, black's his power sword and uh, red are the fists. Yes. So, yeah. So, yeah, that is uh, five hits. You're going to be wounding on fours with the power sword and twos with the reds. All right, so let's see. So we've got two power swords and two uh, fists. So I'm not going to get any save. Was it two power swords or three? Uh, two power swords. Two power swords, so I don't get any armor save, but I get my, discu um, not disgustingly resilient, but my, my five up save. Yeah. I make them both. And then the power fist to D3. So first one will do two damage. Nope, one's dead. And second one will do three damage. Uh, so unless I get lucky, I keep hitting that card terrain over. Ah, <laughs> uh, no, two die. So I do lose two from this squad. Thanks. So three to for three. 
Three for three. Not a good trade-off, but thanks to your feel no pains, although I made a few of mine. I don't get enough in this army. Oh, speaking of which, I do get my... F oh no, I'm now out of range of him, so I won't get my feel no pains for them. But I would from the shooting attacks, which I forgot about, so we'll do that off camera. So, uh, morales. This Acolyte squad lost four, they are leadership eight. They are fine. The Aberrants lost three. They are leadership seven. Oh, that's nine. I'd lose two more. Let's spend my last CP on that. Ugh, not much better, I must say. So that's eight and leadership seven. So I will lose one more, which is fine. I'll, that's more acceptable, but... Annoyingly, anything less and I would have been fine. So no other morale required because they're in range of the Patriarch. At the end of my turn, I'm going to score Secure Objective 6, Secure Objective 1, and Secure Objective 2. And at the end of turn 2, it's 4 points to 4, which works out quite well for me. And I will hold on to my last card, which Yarrow doesn't get to see. <laughs> Uh, so I'll hold on to that just in case it is achievable before my next turn. So a very strong turn for the Gene Steeler Cults, which they really needed. <laughs> brutal, brutal, Br my goodness. Brutal first turn. So we'll be going on to turn three for the Iron Hands, depending on what card Jarrow can draw, uh, what he will be able to do. But at the moment, it is a drawn game at four points to four. Drawn for turn three were defend objective two and mission critical objective five. I think I'm going to give him defend two because that's in my deployment zone where he's sitting on five at the moment, so that's no good. And then we have lightning strike and defend three. So lightning strike is kill a unit entirely in my deployment zone, which are the aberrants and the jackal alphas, or defend three, which is quite close to him. I think I'll go for Lightning Strike, because you can either fall back with the Terminators and try and kill the Aberrants, or try and do it in combat, and hopefully you won't be able to. I don't think anything else can get there. No. So we'll give you a Defend Objective 2 Lightning Strike. You also have Blood and Guts in advance. So if you manage to kill the Aberrants in combat, that'll be a good couple of points. Uh, blood and Guts is probably do maybe doable, depending on what you have. But that is the cards we are going for at the moment. So they go to the bottom of your deck. Right. Uh, and we will see what movement phase, what Yarrow decides to do for his movement. End of the movement phase, the Land Raider falling back, the Attack Bike and the Dreadnought moving up on my Acolytes here. Annoyingly, I shouldn't have put them forward because uh, I forgot about the Focus of Adoration Power or uh, Warlord trait on my Primus would allow them to heroically intervene if they were within six. The cowardly, cowardly Terminators <laughs> falling back from combat. Tactics. <laughs> as, actually remember, and I forgot to fire my sniper last turn, but oh well. The Chaplain Dreadnought and the Lieutenant and the Tech Marine moving up towards my Bikers here. Hoping to take them out. Dreadnought having to stay in combat. The Tacticals choosing to stay in combat over here. So, with that done, we have no psychic phase. Uh, I'm assuming you want to bypass your shooting phase entirely. Uh, I kind of think could be useful. <laughs> okay, that's true. We actually, we did double check, we measured. Only the aberrants are fully in my deployment zone. The jackal alphas is just out. So to score this lightning strike point, he's going to have to take out the aberrants, which I think is why these guys fell back. Annoyingly, I have no CP left, or else I might have played Luck in the Shadows on them to keep them safe from enemy firepower. But alas, I spent them all on re-rolls that were not successful. <laughs> so, where are we starting the shooting phase? Alright, so I will start with this Dreadnought firing straight into your... <clears throat> that hands. makes total sense. So, he has to kill the Aberrants. Alright, so Rocket will be <coughs> repaired. Yep. Uh, one, rock one last kind of miss. So, winding on twos. 
Uh, yeah, two wounds. Uh, I don't get any save right. against these. So, so the first, first one, one is six. six. Oh, that's probably and that guy. The second and the other one. one. Oh! <laughs> yeah, man, you are killing me. We'll do the first one then. Yeah, that's a dead guy. I don't even know why I'm bothering rolling, but you never know. The yeah, second yeah, exactly. one. Two dead guys. Oh, stop it with your rolling. I keep on rolling something like that, so I could have rolled five sixes. You know. You're not Limp Biscuit. <laughs> stop rolling. <laughs> so well. Right. <clears throat> so, marksmen will marks. Okay, where snipers are gonna go, if you keep rolling sixes like this, it's a very dead squad. Uh, or you could do that. So, three hits, forced to wound. Now will be three sixes. No, nope. one, four. one, five up. Oh no, six up because you still have the Devastator Doctrine in effect. Yep. So, nope. And then a five up, feel no pain, which I make. So they are surviving fine. So you need this firepower. So then the Dreadnought's gonna put everything he can into them. So he is minus one to hit because he moved. Yes, that's right. I didn't so pay for uh, bonuses for nope. him. You've got one CP left. Uh, yes, yes, just one. So, I Dreadnought. <coughs> uh, Chaplain Dreadnought into the Aberrants, hitting so, on threes. So, first heavy bolt, uh, bolt guns. Uh, oh no, hits. they hit on twos. Yep. Force to wounds. And re rolling ones for the lieutenant being nearby. So, so two. Two, two normal. Yes, not full save, full pain. Five ups. Yes. And then five ups. Yes, ah, yeah, yeah, they yeah. love it. Heavy bolter. Sorry, assault cannon. Now he will suffer. So trees. Oh, no five rolls. Bought three extra hits. Oh yeah, your world hits. Three extra shots. Yeah, thank you. Damn, that's powerful. Uh, what's what's that from? Is that a forge ball uh, tree? No, no, it's it's iron hands. It's standard iron oh, hands. Oh, it's iron hands one. Okay. So that uh, without this one. Yeah, but it's not meant to be on a warlord with this much firepower. <laughs> that is yeah, uh, two, three, sorry, three. So Ooh. that's wow, that's potential of killing them. Seven yeah. wounds. So seven wounds, AP, AP minus two. two, because the devastator stopped and still in effect. So I'm gonna have to make a lot of five ups um, to pass these, which I do. One is alive on oh, one nice. wound. Uh, meaning you are going to need the firepower of another unit, which I don't know. I've got thunder fire cannons, yes. so I'm gonna thunder fire the, the hell Yeah, out of because them. the Tech Marine doesn't have range. Yeah. These guys were already fired, no one I else. Mean, I guess the no, Tech Marine will not see him through the building. And he doesn't have range with him, I believe. Uh, Bolt gun. Oh, okay, he won't be able to see him. And everything else is gonna struggle. So, okay, we're putting the thunder fire cannon then. No, I cannot put this plasma cannon there. there. No. Uh, so yeah, Thunderfire cannon into one wound guy. Uh, that's seven hits. Seven shots. shots. Yeah, hitting on twos, which Yaro was also surprised to discover in this game. He didn't realise it was two plus either. That's quite powerful. Yeah, it's pretty good. That's full house and wounding you on trees. That's... Try to roll five feel no pains now. Uh, <laughs> minus two, yes. so I don't get a save. But this will be five feel no pains. If I fail one, I'm dead. So let's make all five. Don't do that. Don't do that. No, oh. he's dead. <laughs> so that will get you your point for lightning strike. And um, we'll do the rest of the shooting, which I think will just be these guys into the aberrants. And some bolt guns into your... And a couple of bolt pistols into the Kelmorph. And we will come back with the Charge charges, fight. which I assume there will be none. <laughs> <laughs> I wish. Rest of the shooting, the attack bike and the Venerable Dreadnought going into the Acolyte Hybrids, killing seven. Uh, I removed the rock drills so to make his charges a bit bigger. Uh, over here, the Tech Marine actually managing to kill off one of the bikes with a combination of the Flamer and the Plasma Cutter. Uh, over here, both pistols missed and at the Kelmorph, thankfully. And the cowardly, cowardly Terminators cannot fire because they fell back. So, pretty light shooting phase. Uh, Bolt was doing some damage, but I've still got a lot of firepower left. Fortunately, the Thunderfire can having to go into the lone aberrant, meaning that you can't slow down my acolytes. Yeah. My last command point was for that. Yeah, <laughs> which was handy for me. So, we will go into now the charge phases.
charge phase. I should All right. Say. So okay. I will start with the top lane. So he's gonna multi charge the squad and, and the bikers. Yeah, and we will do the Overwatch off camera. But he gets so he gets a seven, seven is enough to get in. Fine. Yep. So he's gonna just jump over here. Yep. <clears throat> Puny mortals. That is fine. Uh, Any other charges? He gonna multi charge as well. Yep. Five is probably so enough just, just to get into those guys. Uh, like here. Yep. And he gonna multi charge as well, trying to okay. get as many as I can on your bikers. Mm -hmm. uh, so that would be seven inches on them. Yep. And over here we gonna see six. <coughs> six. On so guys. just into the acolyte hybrids. Yep. <coughs> so that should be fine. Fine. So those hybrids will have a bad day. <clears throat> that they will. Any other charges? Yes, and on this side, let's try to uh, charge with my dreadnought. Okay. Gonna roll over next time. So, dreadnought charging six inches. That's enough to get in, I imagine. Yeah. Uh, so and the attack bike. An attack bike. Twelve. Oh. Definitely enough to get in. <clears throat> they still have mate from beyond, but mm, don't know who will survive. Right, we will do the overwatch for these guys, and then we will come back. Uh, with not a dead chaplain dreadnought, unfortunately, but we'll see what he decides to do in the fight phase. Right, Overwatch then no damage from the uh, bikers, the jackals. Uh, I managed to get one hit, sorry, one wound with Flamer, but he made the save. Combat, we're going to start off with the Lieutenant with the Teeth of Terror, which is now a plat plus three, so plus four attacks, giving them seven or eight? A seven. Seven attacks, hitting on twos. Does the chaplain get Dreadnought get this? Uh, chaplain Dreadnought gives him plus one to strength against uh, semi unit. It doesn't get the V-rolls no. though, okay. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna burn one command point to make them reroll once to hit. Okay, in which case, I do, I get one back. So that gives me one, not enough to interrupt, but I do get one back to spend on all my wonderful toys. <laughs> so... So, ten sword into the squad. Yep. Hitting on twos. So that's no rerolls. Uh, no. So wounding and on threes. Wounding you on threes. Maybe twos even, because four, five, six. Is it plus two strength for the Teeth of one, Terra? Plus one for the Teeth of Terra, plus one for Chaplain. What does the Chaplain do? He, any unit that is... Uh, and in my unit that's in combat with us. Uh, okay, so he will be winning on twos. So winning on twos, that's uh, rerolling one for himself. That's five. That's five. AP, AP minus. Minus two. So five die. We'll do, yeah, we'll do the rest of the combat and see what is left from my cult. End of the fight phase, the, over here, the Dreadnought and the Attack Bike managed to kill all but one of the Acolytes, I was able to pull them to keep him in morale range, so he will not die. Uh, doing one wound back on the attack bike in reply. Over here, the uh, Chaplain, Dreadnought, choosing to put all of his attacks into the Acolyte hybrids in order to get uh, blood and guts. guts. So he did do it, keeping my bikes alive who attacked back and did nothing. Kelamorph taking one wound in combat from oh, the Power Axe. I made one save. Two wounds got through, I made one save. And doing no wounds in reply. So at the end of your turn, uh, no morale for me because this lone guy is immune. Uh, and Can you move your guy so he is uh, in combat with him or is he outside of the combat right now? He's outside of combat right, right. now. I'm not going to pile in with him. So uh, he is doing okay. These Lost one biker, but they are fine. They didn't get wiped out. No morale for me. Um, I will. S you will score. Sorry. So I will score uh, blood and guts for one point. Yep. And, and lightning, lightning strike. strike for another one point. Do you want to discard any? Uh, I guess I will discard advance because that's silly. Yeah. And I will also score defend objective two because you didn't take out the bikers. I so that see. takes it to. Six points to six going into my turn three. So we'll need to see what cards I can draw. Uh, bit of a precarious position in turn three, but I've got a good right flank's looking okay. 
Left flank's looking a bit iffy. <laughs> so <laughs> with the loss of the aberrants and all my CP gone, so we will come back with my cards drawn. You've got one extra CP right now thanks to your commander, so... Nexus, thanks to my Nexus who's done very little all game, but that's what he's there for, to farm CP. So we will come back... Oh, and I have a free reroll, which I always forget about thanks to the Magus. I always forget about that. Can't turn that into a command point, unfortunately. <laughs> to interrupt, but I get a free reroll. So we'll come back with the cards drawn for the Dreams of the Cults on turn three. So going into turn four, these are my cards drawn. This one might be able to get. This I'll struggle with. This I'll probably get. And Mission Critical, which I had to tell Yarrow because I had to roll for it. Mission Critical Objective 6, which I should be able to get. So, not a bad turn of cards. Let's see what moves I decide to do on my turn. End of my movement phase, my uh, Karmavis just running away because there's really nothing Coward. you can do there. These guys falling back towards the objective. This guy moving up over here. These characters moving up. I have used my familiar so I won't get to cast an extra power. Although, this guy can. Uh, the Patriarch can. This, the Patriarch advancing four inches. These guys moving up to here. The uh, Acolyte, Lone Acolyte staying in combat, which is fine. Uh, the Nexus advancing to get up onto this objective. So at the moment, I'm going to score a few points this turn, hopefully. We'll see what else I can do. So we are going to go with the Psychic Phase and we're going to start with Mental Onslaught from the Patriarch into the Tech Marine. So this is a casting value of 6. Yep. That's 7. So we checked, it's Leadership 8 and Leadership 10, so we're doing the roll off again. So if you want to roll first, please. So... 8 plus 1. Nope, takes a wound. How many wounds does he have for uh, remaining? He's got 3 wounds. In total or remaining? Uh, two wounds in total. 2 wounds in total. He's only yeah. got 2 wounds? Yeah, yeah. Oh, he's, wow. He's just a gunner. He's a, no, it's the Tech Marine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tech Marine. Okay, gunner. so he has a character though. Yes, he That's has. fine. So we roll again. Uh, Alright, uh, another 2. Which is a fail, because I that's yeah. 10 and I can't fail, so he's dead. Uh, feel no points, wait a second. Oh, yeah, you need to do them one live. Uh, nope. No, he's dead. Well, you, we're doing them at the time, but yeah, that's fine. So, and the Thunderfire can is removed as oh, well, man. which works out okay for me. Um, other psychic power, I'm going to measure up and see what I can take over with his other power. Okay, just checking the ranges. We're going to go with a mind control on the Dreadnought, which has a casting value of 7. And I fail, that's fine. And then we're going to go with the Magus is going to use Might from Beyond on the big squad of Acolytes beside him, which he gets on a 9. So they also have Might from Beyond. Uh, so slightly better psychic phase this turn. Uh, shooting phase. I mean, I was planning to shoot the Assassin into the uh, Tech Marine, or the, the Sniper into Tech Marine, but that's a fail now. What we'll do then, won't be much shooting because I fell back, but we will put the pistols from the Kelomorph into the Tactical Squad. So that is going to be six hits. Sorry, six shots. Don't want to jinx it. Oh, only three hits. So three extra shots. Be rolling because I've hit. So that's I think that's how it's played, I'm not sure. So that's six hits, forced wound. Ow, that is only one wound at minus one. Damn. I was assuming the pistols were gonna finish off this tactical squad. Uh finish uh, kills one of them. How many wounds? One. No, two damage, sorry, two damage. Alright, uh no. No. Nope. So one tactical marine is slain. So it's up to sergeant to Oh, that's unfortunate. Three ones is unfortunate. These guys can't shoot because they fell back. Um, we'll do some pistol fire into the Dreadnought off camera. Probably a sniper rifle into him because I can't really see anything else. But we will... Uh... Oh no, sorry. Start the shooting phase. The Clamavus does some... So on a six, the units take a mortal wound. So the attack bike yep. takes one. The Dreadnought 
doesn't. So the attack bite takes a lot of wounds. Feel a lot of pain. <laughs> and you uh. make a lot of pain. <laughs> so we'll do the sniper into. Ah, while we're here, let's put him into this dreadnought because if I can do a mortal wound, at least I'm doing something. So hitting on twos because yeah. I'm my guy. Wounding on a five, sixes do mortals. Nope, no wounds. So, but there's no characters in range. We'll do some pistol fire off camera and see if I can put any more wounds into this dreadnought. Pistol fire doing nothing at all. So we're going to start with the charges. We're going to put the patriarch into the dreadnought. Patriarch going into Dreadnought, I'll need a 7. Don't get the Clamavis bonus, don't get any cult bonuses because I'm Patriarch. He makes it in. So he prevents Overwatch, so we're going to multi-charge the rest in. So the Acolytes are going to go into the Dreadnought and the characters are going to go into the Attack Bike and nothing else is going to be able to charge. So we will do the movement, no Overwatch because my Patriarch stops it and we'll come back with the rest of the charge moves. So everyone making it in after the Patriarch, no one could really fail. Uh, the Acolyte's getting to go eight inches. I've got one CP reroll left. I, and a reroll for like damage to hit to wound with my uh, Warlord trait on the Magus. So we will start with the Patriarch into the Dreadnought. Hitting on twos. Mm, I'm rolling a lot of ones this turn. Wounding on fives. Right. But with rerolls. Oh, I don't need rerolls. Um, well, I could have done a few more seconds, but that's four wins, so three at minus three. So I can save those three, maybe. And yep. The, the six goes through. Yep. So sixes? No. No. So and these do D3 damage each. So these are six, seven. Plus and three. plus the other three is 10, so ten. you need 10 right. feel. So that's 10 wounds, 10 feel no pains. Uh, he makes 3, so seven. that is 7. So that's just enough. Oh, is he only got you, you, you told me that he overcharged. Oh, yeah, he did, so. he did take a wound. So he's dead, does he explode? Of course he explodes. Oh, no, <laughs> that's off the table. Roll another one. Another one then. Oh. No. No. He is dead. So we'll do the rest of the attacks into the attack bike. And uh, yeah, I was hoping to keep safe from the firepower. That's not going to happen. Not going to happen. Rest of the attacks taking out the attack bike. Um, over here, Kelamorph failing to do any damage on the lone tactical arena after a horrendous round of shooting and taking two wins himself, leaving him on one. So this could be precarious for him in the next turn. But. Uh, Pretty good for me. Uh, well, if my shooting was a bit better, might have actually taken them out and been able to do something. Um, so, um, yeah. at the end of my turn, I'm going to score mission critical objective six. I'm getting secure four with my Nexus, actually doing something. I'll score assassinate because I killed the tech marine, yeah. and I will discard hold the line because I am not killing your terminators. So at the end of that turn, turn three for the Genes of the Cults, takes it to nine points to the Cult to six, six for the Iron Hand. So the Cult getting a nice uh, lead there, going into turn four for the Iron Hands. Turn four for the Iron Hands, these are the pairs of cards drawn. Uh, Psychological Warfare or Kingslayer, let's give you Kingslayer. It's risky, but you're probably going to get Psychological anyway, if I uh, keep it. Uh, secure six, Defend one, I'll give you Defend one because the only thing over here is your Land Raider and I've got enough troops to take you off it. And then Emperor's Retribution, control an objective held by your opponent. For D3, uh, or Assassinate. Um, you can probably get both of these, so let's go for Assassinate, so you only score the one. And you have to put some firepower into my guy if you want to do it. So, uh, you can probably kill two characters. I think you'll struggle yes. to kill three. I could kill those two well, over could, there. You could kill three, actually. And maybe if I move over here nicely, I could... Maybe, Slime. so it's either a guaranteed D3 or a possible D3. So we'll give you them, but this could be a high scoring turn for you. 
Let's go. If you do, okay. So those will be the cards for the Iron Hands. We will come back to you with the movement phase for turn four. Turn four for the Iron Hands, the Land Raider moving across but can't get in range of the characters. The Terminators, the Lieutenant and the uh, Chaplain Dreadnought converging on my bikers. The uh, other Dreadnought moving up to target my Clamavus. The Technorine advancing but failing to get into range to heal him. The Tactical Marine falling back. The Scouts moving back to get line of sight on the Kelomorph to target him. And the Dreadnought staying in place. So potentially, if he kills the Kelomorph, my biker here, and the Clamavus, he will be able to get the T characters and the D3 points. So that would be a good score for him in this turn. And he's probably going to get Defend 2 because I really have very little that can get back here and do some damage. So with that, we will go on to the shooting phase. Although I really don't have, I don't think I'll have much left after this, just a few units. So it really will depend on the cards drawn and how we do this. So, let's, uh, where are we starting with the shooting phase? Let's start with Land Raider. He will try to finish off the, the last guy with heavy bolter and last cannons will be... Which guy? Uh, you have one, one yes, guy I have one. Yes, I have one lone, so you yeah, yeah, so Actually, I will kill him with last cannon beast. Because really? that would be more brutal. Yeah. Die to my last cannon beast. <laughs> so, two hits. Two, hits. two is to win. Uh, that's two AP4. Because we are still in... Damage D6. Yeah, so that's... One and three. So four, six up feel no pains. Because I now remember to put the icon mod next to them, but they fails. So the lone guy in that squad is dead. And the heavy bolters... Oh, this game, my heavy bolters did nothing, so let's hope... And who are they going into? Uh, into? Into the last. Yeah, I figured that. So that is... Uh, that is... Five hits. Five hits, yeah. Three is to win. Uh, I cannot shoot anything else, so that's the only thing. Minus two, so I don't get any save, but six up, feel no pains. Yeah. I nice. make one, so that is two are killed. Uh, yeah, let's take those two out. Right, <coughs> who. We'll do most of this shooting because it is going so, to be important. Let's do the trick shots first. Okay, so. Snipers. Snipers into the Kelomorph. Kelomorph. Hitting on fours oh. because you moved. So just one, one. Hit. <laughs> wounding on a three wounds, wounds. no more wounds, and I get a five up save because I am uh, not I'm twisted, um, not twisted helix. I'm four armed emperor, not the other one. So five up. Nope, that is not enough right. to keep him alive. Do I want to CP reroll that because yeah, uh, you want because. If he will stay alive, I, mean, I can still spit Oh yeah, you can still spot a fire with the dread, so I don't think that's... But I would have to put mm. rocket launcher into someone and rocket launcher you know what? to miss. No, we're going to hold on to this because uh, we're going to hold on to CP because that's just a waste. All right. Let's see what would have happened. Uh, yeah. yeah, I wouldn't have made it anyway. Wise so, choice. Good choice. So that is the Kelomorph dead, that is one point for assassinate. So oh. now the Lotus cannons and rocket launchers will go into... Yeah, you are minus bike. one to hit my biker. Yeah, so, so hitting you on trees. Yep. Uh, that's two hits. Two hits. And one on two two's to win. That's two AP3 and AP4, which probably. Yep, that's going to go right through my armor. So 2d6 damage, double one, please. I can do the. Uh, no, so he one is one. definitely dead. So that is two characters dead. Next, we will go the Dreadnought into the Clamavus yes. to see if he can take it out for his three character kills. So, first Assault Cannon, <coughs> only hitting on trees because Un he did more. Unfortunately, you drew both cards were going to be D3 points anyway, yeah. annoyingly, but this is probably at least. Oh no! Oh no, he's hitting on threes, isn't yeah, he? He hit on threes. Damn! That's nice. So, you are wounding on oh, twos. twos. I believe, and it's AP4, so that's four wounds. And I do think that's all he has. We'll double check that. Only four wounds in the clam of us, so he is definitely slain. That is three character kills, and that will be D3 points for Yarrow at the end of the turn for Assassinate. 
So nicely played there. Annoyingly, it could have helped me with deployment, but I didn't know what you were going to get. Rest of the firepower coming in at the Italian Jackals over here. The minus one to help, helping a little, but losing two bikes and one on one round remaining. So we're going to go into the charge phase now, of which I assume there's going to be a couple. So who is doing what? So Chaplin is going to match the, the yep. monsters there. So we will go with the clearance incinerator. Or the Italian incinerate, I should say. Four hits, wow. wounding on fives, one wound. All right, minus uh, one, I believe. Four up. Yeah, he's good. Them. And the shotguns, nothing. So right. the chaplain gets to go. Six is enough Six to get him in. And I guess the other guys are going to follow yeah. him in as I well. Can, I will just charge with him. I will use yep. Terminators for Landbreaker. Okay, yeah, so we may as well move into the combat phase because that's it, the yep. chaplain. So chaplain being the boss and warlord will strike first. Mm -hmm. Hitting on, on uh, tools. So three hits. And wounding you on tools again. Your strength? Uh, strength, yeah, oh, yeah, crazy. So twos. Uh, and three only ones for... Uh, yeah, the lieutenant. lieutenant. So three wounds minus... Three. Uh, how many damage each? Plus three. So what? So that's in dead. That's the squad dead. I'm not going to get a save against that. So the squad is wiped out as well. So at the end of your turn, you start defending two. You right. score D3 for assassinate. Yeah, so let's see how much would that be. That's two. two. Right. So it is now eight points to the Iron Hands and nine points to the Cult. Do you want to discard either Kingslayer or defend two? Uh, Give me a second. Oh no, not defend two. So I join and discard Kingslayer or defend one. Uh, defend one, yeah, definitely. I, yeah. I will discard it because so, slaying king would be awesome. Yeah, I really don't have many units <laughs> left. I will so, consolidate it a bit over here. Yeah. Just giving, getting those. So the we will need to see what cards can be drawn. Uh, but at the moment, the cult is one point ahead. At the end of your turn, you'll be getting two for that. I very much imagine. So we will be. Uh, yes. Your draw. We're That's seeing what. I am drawing four cards, so good chance of getting, hopefully, a good chance of getting some decent objectives. And we'll come back to you for my turn four. So, turn four, these are my cards I get. So, not the best set of cards, I must say. Uh, Yarrow did doing pretty well. So, we will come back and see what I decide to do for my movement phase in this turn. Right, end of my movement phase, the uh, Nexus going into the building to hopefully <laughs> hide for a while and survive. The Patriarch advancing. Now, Yarrow does have Kingslayer, so this could be dodgy. Uh, the other squad's moving up to get into range. What I think I'm going to do, now this could be entirely stupid, but let's play my last... Right, so my movement phase, I'm going to spend my last CP on Return to the Shadows. Now this could be a big mistake. But we are going to put the Acolyte Hybrids into reserve and they will deploy on turn 5 in the next turn where I need them to go. That's a pretty good idea. So I think, do I keep the CP? No. So that was a 3 for my Nexus. So I'm down to my last CP. This could be foolish because I could have just given you Kingslayer. But let's see what happens anyway. I have a feeling your king is gonna slay my king right now. We will see what we can do. But so that unit will go into reserve to come back next turn, and I am out of CP. And we will go on to the psychic phase. Okay, start of the psychic phase. We are gonna go with a mental onslaught onto your warlord. Yeah. Hopefully, doing some damage here and doing a glorious. Uh, Warlord kill. We'll see. Nope, that is a fail to cast that. We'll then go over Smite from my uh, Magus, which goes through 
and does one. Can I? Re I don't think I can reroll that with my CPU reroll because it's not a damage roll. It's so not a CPU reroll. You've got still your. I've still got my free reroll, but I'll save that. So that is one. Feel no pain. Nope. Nope. So he Down takes a eight. wound. Annoyingly, I was hoping to do a bit more damage with that. So shooting phase. Um, I think I've got. Nope. My Primus is just out of range to shoot, as are most of my squad. So we will do then uh, a charge. We're going to do a charge into the Warlord only. Alright, yeah. I cannot do Overwatch because you are. Cannot do Overwatch because of my thing. And 10. That is enough to that get in. Nice. So he is going to move around to here and hopefully do some damage. Uh, let's see these other guys. They are, I think, outside of 12 intruders. Yeah, I think they're just out, so that is not going to help me there. And at least you don't have assassinate anymore, so that helps matters. So what we're going to do is... I mean, I probably can't kill you, but let's see. You killed one, let's see if you can kill another. Well, I don't think he did it, but... Yes, he did. He exploded my dread out. That's okay. true, that is true. We are hitting on twos. Yeah. <sighs> Really ah. didn't need. Do you know what? We have one reroll. Yeah, my free reroll. Yes. Yeah. So Wounding on fives. Wow. With rerolls. That's nice. Oh, damn it. That is. Couldn't ask for better. So that is right. going to be three six up saves. Uh, no, does he have an in -bun? He's got five up in -bun. So it is going to be five five up in -buns. All right, so first those multiple. Uh, flat one, yeah, yeah, one's two were flat three. Yeah, so flat three. One is safe. He makes one. And, and then the other three. Other three. Oh, oh yeah, man. Oh, man. So you made three out of five. So that is going to be three plus two or five. So, five so that's going to be five damage in total. Feel no pains. No feel no pains. Fives go through, and then so I do get to to I do get to attack with my familiars. Yeah, yeah, go for it. Four attacks with the familiars, hitting on twos, and wounding on strength four in the familiar, So wounding on fives. These three ones. Oh. No, nope, that's nothing. So annoyingly. Thanks to, again, Yarrow's amazing rolling when he faces me, making three out of five. I, I don't know what to say, man. I, I'm not no pains. So you can do your attacks back. All right, so four basic, plus one four being charged, and sixes explode. Yep. Can my top lane... Ah, oh, of course, I roll sixes. I, I'm sorry, man. Yarrow, every time. I'm every really time sorry. I play you, your rolling is incredible. Yeah, <coughs> I don't know, man. I... Another six, but that actually it doesn't explode. Yeah. So that is gonna see test your in strength. Save. Strength is seven uh, doubles. That would be uh, fourteen. So. So I you are winning on twos. So that's uh, one. Uh, I can reroll for the lieutenant. So that's. I'm afraid seven. <sighs> Yaro. Okay, this was a mistake. <laughs> Most definitely, this was a mistake. So seven. Invulnerable saves. Yep. Well, two will kill the familiars because yep. they've got nothing left to do, and then five remaining. These are flat three damage. Flat three damage. So I think if I fail two of these, I'm dead. Yep, that's enough to slay the warlord. Annoyingly, so that will give you. Ah, uh, what was I thinking? What was I thinking? That was foolish. Right. So that will give you. That will give me a lot. A lot of so how many points is that? <coughs> so, so that's the end of my turn. No, I am not going to score anything in that turn because I had kill the unbelievers, which was kill a unit, which I was hoping to do with your warlords. But I thought I could go after that, but the odds of killing it were slim. Yeah. Although I might have done <laughs> better uh, charging the guys in. So I'm not going to get any points, and I will discard um, defense six. Because I'm not getting that. So you score two points for defend two. two. So that takes it to ten points to nine. Then you slay the warlord is eleven points to nine, and then D three points. So oh. of course. Sorry. So that's fourteen points to nine. Um, <clears throat> do you know what? We'll call it there. I believe so, yes. Quite frankly, so I will get... Let's see what your cards are, though. 
what your cards for next time because foolishly I thought my warlord if you had normal rolling I would have killed your warlord yes, yeah definitely but I agree special yarrow rolling versus me and um, using dreadnoughts uh, I, I can roll for dreadnoughts yeah nothing else dreadnoughts yeah I thought take a fun army it's six dreadnoughts you turn up with horrendous army to face no one uses dreadnoughts they're useless no, not against the cult. The cult, I have no weapons that can really... Well, I did okay yeah. against them, but I still. Mean, so how many cards do you need to draw? Uh, full four. Full four. So, defend six, defend four, overwhelming, no mercy. So you're getting that. Air of denial you're getting. And, yeah. Uh, so, you're going to score... I'll give you defend four, which you're not getting. You'll get overwhelming... Or destroying the enemy unit, so it doesn't matter which one you're going to get yeah. best. <clears throat> Hold the line, which you're going to get. A secure four, which you're going to not get. But yeah, no, there's no point continuing with that. So my plan was to bring in the Acolytes for secure five. And maybe get kill the Unbelievers for killing a unit. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, we'll call it there. So <clears throat> again, <throat> again, Yarrow. I'm going to stop inviting you back, because quite <laughs> frankly... I, I, I feel very rude right now. No, no, that's fine. That's, you know, I chose to charge the Warlord and he died. That was a risk well, I the, took. the battle was epic. But to be honest, not really. <laughs> <laughs> I died like a punk. <clears throat> if I could manifest any psychic powers, that would be wonderful. But he probably would have died in the shooting phase next yeah. time, in all honesty. So, we'll go on to the after battle thoughts. Okay, so thanks to Yarrow for a, a, a really a good game, actually. Um, it was it, close. It was really close. It was the end. close up until I made a suicidal mistake with the Patriarch in the final turn. Um, as I was saying multiple times, I don't know what it is about you, Yarrow. Every time I play you, your rolling is incredible. And my rolling was pretty good in that game, but... I don't, I don't know what it is. Whenever I play your Harlequins, look at if you can look up the last battle report, Dark Angels versus Harlequins, you wouldn't fail an invun. Uh, you uh, yeah, it's just every time. Apart from the one time we got together in a doubles tournament, <laughs> um, we got mashed. <laughs> no, where your rolling was horrendous. So quick, quick aside, we will get back to the battle, but. Yano and I went to a doubles tournament. I took my guard, you took your Harlequins. First game we came up against Chaos. Yeah. They had one of those Dread Claw Forge War drop pod things. I shot at it with my army, took it down to two wounds, uh, leaving your five Harlequins with fusion pistols to shoot at. I could and then your luck of you. You made one hit out of five on a two plus, and then you failed to wound. Yeah, yeah, to yeah, leave yeah. it alive. That was, um, and then we did the same thing against the night army, where I don't think you hit with a single fusion pistol the whole game. Yeah, I mean against night army, I was amazing in close combat, but yeah, to to get into close combat, that was kind of challenge. <laughs> so Yaro's luck is always amazing against me, but when he plays with me, can't can't do anything. I mean. I think mean, you you make two massive mistakes in previous game. You fight against pink army that <laughs> cost you a game. In yep. this game, you were uh, following first emperor, which yep. again cost you a game. So going back to this game, um, not getting first turn always hurts hurts with the cult. Basically, you've got very little on the board to have to survive two turns of enemy firepower. Um, the cards weren't terrible, actually. With a better draw on turn four, I might not have, not have made such a stupid mistake, in all honesty. But turn one was good for you. You, you did some damage, but not yeah. a huge amount. Uh, my first turn, abysmal. Shooting phase, did nothing. Um, turn two, the, you brought me down to two models, but that was kind of expected, because only had like, yeah. a couple of guard squads left. My second turn worked out. Uh, amazing. Got all the charges in, did some damage. Uh, annoyingly, the, so the last battle report was against Iron Hands, and David kept making six up feel no pains. This game, you made quite a few, probably statistically average, but you made them where they counted. Yeah, such cool. as the 
the Terminators, the aberrants should have. If it wasn't for your feel no pains, the yes. Terminators would have been wiped oh, those, those by the aberrants. Um, annoyingly, yeah, there's a few turn, there's a few interesting points in this game. The aberrants failing to take out the Terminators, I think, was one. The reserves were tricky. Um, failing to take out the dread as well hurt me. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. I think on the right hand side, my reserves was maybe overkill to take out a tactical squad and a dreadnought, but there was really no one else I could go. You with two turns to push forward. Yes, you had me push pretty far back, so I, I kind of had to go where I could. Um, unfortunately. I really, but, yeah, I really think you played very clever the way you blocked my Land Raider from shooting, uh, the way you controlled this part of the table. That was really smart. Yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong, there was some. I don't think pushing the Jackal forward was a mistake, but then you draw an assassinate, or me giving you assassinate, was. Uh, yeah, there was nothing I could have done about that. The Kellermorph whiffing. That was surprising. I watch battle reports where the Kelamor kills characters, slays people. I've used him twice now and he has done nothing at all. Like he, he really struggles to do much. Um I find I think he's worth it because the odds of there was no there was none of your characters really worth targeting. The tech marine gets a two up save, so yeah. I struggle to kill him. Um I, I played quite clever with my lieutenant, so... Maybe going after okay. one of the dreadnoughts? Could have. Might have maybe. been with the two damage, maybe, but we don't know. Um, so, yeah, so I think the cult did okay. The, the problem they have is they hit hard, but then they just melt. With the amount of bolt or an assault cannon fire you had... Basically, because you kept the Devastator Doctrine on the whole game, I wasn't getting a save at all. Not that it matters much with Cult, but um, I wasn't getting a save with anything because you were AP minus two yes. for the whole game. And the stupid, stupid Iron Hands, six up saves, which I get six up saves with my Acolyte Anchor Mod. I don't make any of them. I don't make any of them. Following so, wrong, wrong Emperor, that's, that's the biggest mistake. Yeah, I'm not sure really what... What could have been done differently? Like, I had to bring my reserves in turn two. I had to bring everyone in. I don't think I had a choice yeah, because was, I had nothing left was a very good option. in the game. Um, again, there wasn't really much need to concentrate them because you didn't have anything worth... There was nowhere I could have deployed all my units and gone after you. Maybe, maybe on the left flank... I wanted to go after the cards because you were four points up on turn two, so I wanted to get objective one, objective six, and objective two. It might have been better bringing them in, concentrating on the left flank, because if I could have made all my charges with the acolytes, I might have been able to kill your warlord with them. Yeah, I guess with a bit of luck. Yeah. With that volume of attacks, plus one to wound. You would probably wipe out the, my uh, this side and I could have sent something after your tacticals who could have then threatened your scouts the following turn, taking out both dreads. So it might have been better concentrating on the left flank with my entire army. But then again, the problem I had was your terminators were blocking a lot of space as well. So I really didn't have much deployment space. Again, had I gone first, I would have had more room. I might have concentrated on the left flank, but because your Terminators were like here, boxing me out, uh, I really would have struggled against targets. So I think next time I need to maybe just concentrate more, but with the way the cult works, I don't have much fast moving. It would have been just giving up an entire flank and yeah. quite a few objectives. So and who by, knows? By putting more stuff over there, you could risk more overwatch yeah. happening to your, your army. Yeah, so overall a good game. It, it started off slow, but I managed to bring it back then, I don't know, losing my mind in turn <laughs> four, thinking that my... Pa I always, always charge my Patriarch into units within Von saves, and they always make them. They always He, he always whiffs against them, so that's my fault, because I, I do that every time. 
and I never learn. He he will chew through units that don't have an invun. But if yeah. they do, yeah, yeah. As you see, so, sometimes your exactly opponent, you want red now with no invulnerable save. Don't. Yeah. Sometimes your opponent gets lucky, makes it. So, uh, yeah, I think uh, I'm in a bit of a losing streak with the um, bat reports at the moment, <laughs> which which is good. But in all honesty. I'm in a bit of a losing streak with the cult. They just, they struggle. They really do struggle. They, they hit hard, but they they melt. They uh, they are tissue paper. I just wonder, would it be sometimes better to actually deploy them on the table to just sw swarm no. on the table? No, I don't think so. Had I deployed them on the table. Your firepower would have hurt me a lot more, and I probably wouldn't have got a tar charge to turn three. Right. If you deploy the cult, if you don't use cult ambush, you're basically getting rid of the only good rules, the only good bonus. Because then I'm not getting my cult creed, so I'm not getting the bonus. I only get the bonus to charge when I arrive. I see. So I wouldn't be getting that. I would with your deployment. It probably would have taken me three turns. You would. You would have shredded the units, and um, basically your firepower. You fired at what you could, but you didn't have a great deal of options. You, I imagine, if I had deployed them on the table, you'd have gone after the acolytes, left the brood brothers alone. The brood brothers would have done nothing to you. I like the cult, but they are not a forgiving army. If I, I have this idea. I'm not sure what. Uh, by having this game right now, I just want to ask you, how about using uh, more shooting options for your, your uh, army? Because I'm thinking that, be, not being absolutely not, not a player from, for, for this army, uh, with the way you, you, you deploy, you can actually put some chaff where you don't want to have nothing important, and all your heavy hitters, so they cannot be hit back. Would this make sense? Mm, the problem with the cult is, their shooting units are pretty poor. Like, they're cheap, but if I was going to go shooting, I'd probably just take a Brood Brothers detachment to allow me to take a guard battalion. So then I can get access to, like, um, tank commanders. You know, I get orders on the squads. I don't get the uh, regiment doctrines, but I get to use a lot of the stratagems, like um, take cover, can you still use uh, redeploy on, on those squads? No, no. The other problem with taking Brood Brothers is they don't get cult ambush, so they can't use blip counters. They have to be deployed. Right. So the problem with the cult is they have pretty much no firepower. Um, most things are pretty poor. Scout sentinels or sentinels hitting on fours, so you're hitting with 50%. You're spending 50 points on a one-shot weapon, which has got a 50% chance of missing. The mining lasers, the heavy weapons are short-ranged. How about the battle cannons? Uh, again, you can take a layman Russ, but they're hitting on fours. The, the guard do it better. If you're going to go for heavy well, shooting... You can deploy them where you want. That's you can hide them, but in all honesty, with a single vehicle... Against your army, it would be dead. No, no, I'm thinking about three of them really, or even whatever. Too expensive. You <laughs> need you need the bodies with the guard. I think three. If you're taking three layman russes, you take three tank commanders. You go in the Astra Militarum, you take three tank commanders. They're hitting on threes. They're ordering themselves. They're getting better bonuses. I I, I do have a layman cult layman russ. It's not worth the points. It's right. I really don't think it's worth. Um, same with most of the vehicles with the cult, simply not worth the points. They're not that expensive, not worth it. They, they die pretty easily. The, the truck is fine, but it's toughness 6, 10 wounds, 6 up feel no pain, 4 plus save. It's fine, but I, I generally find taking one, it dies. The rock grinder's okay in combat, it's not brilliant, uh -huh. but... Again, it dies before it gets to the enemy because they can't deploy from reserve. They have to go on the table, which when you've got so few vehicles, most yeah. opponents have enough firepower. It just deals with it. Deals with like you, you've got the what six las cannons and a missile launcher would obliterate my vehicles easily. Like uh, anything I deployed, and it's not worth the points cost, and it's not really worth the firepower. I've found. Yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, you need to go with bodies. What I think, are, unfortunately, that's all the acolytes have. I think another unit of acolytes, maybe, would be of use. The bikers. They were awesome. I did, <laughs> did enjoy the, what what they did. They annihilate my dreadnought. You say that it's they're a cheap unit. Don't get me wrong. They're only like what are they? Um, Ninety points, which isn't bad. My dread was but they get one turn. They they spend it, to use that costs three CP on an army which is pretty hungry for CP. They get one turn. They can fluff the demo charges. Thankfully, they didn't in this game. Um, actually, four CP if you use the oh yeah because you need plus one strat. So that's already like a quarter, a third of my CP yeah. on. A 90 point unit which can kill one unit. It's not the best investment. Had I got first turn, I probably would have deployed them on the table and gone with that because then I'm saving two, two CP on them. Uh, but not getting the first turn, they just die. Even the minus one to hit, they just die. Uh, what I might do is go for a bigger unit. I might go for a full unit. Um, How much would be full units? I think it's three quad bikes and nine. Oh, it can yeah, it can include up to twelve bikers oh. and uh, three of the wolf quads. Oh, which that would be disgusting. At minus <laughs> one to hit, it's not terrible. Minus one to hit plus one save. The problem now is um, you. Would <coughs> I grenades everywhere. See, I used to take I take them with rusted claw because it allows them to use that stratagem uh -huh. to get plus one to wound and plus one to hit with the grenades, which is great for the demo charges, and it gives me plus one save against AP minus one and zero. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, the problem against marines now is thanks to the doctrines. Change. So much firepower is even the assault cannons are now AP two, so they're ignoring my bonus, and I'm not getting a save. Um, and most other weapons don't you don't bother with. So the the doctrines I think are really helpful against like the assault cannons. You are denying me a save the whole game because you you stuck with it, and I'm AP minus two. And from what I've heard, iron hands are going to be awesome in the supplement. So. Oh. Uh, I wouldn't <clears throat> think so. I think the um, yeah, I, I need to stop playing Space Marines with the cult because they they really struggle um, against them. We'll see what. Yeah, but that no, it was a, it was a fun game up to my suicidal mad rush. So what should I have done? Um, I think you did everything great. Maybe as you have said, I uh, concentrate more on, on on my right flank instead of. Uh, Mm. Some over here. I mean, in turn four, with the game where it was, with my, do you think going after the land? So the cards I had were kill a unit, yeah, defend four, which I was going to get yes. with my nexus, secure five, which was over, over here, yeah, which I wasn't getting, and I think the secure four, I know did secure six or defend six, which I wasn't getting. Mm -hmm. So, do you think? I I think what I would do. I, do you know what I reckon I should have done? Yeah. Gone after your land raider. I wouldn't have killed it, but the way it was, I could have wrapped around it, stopped you shooting at me. I kind of blocked you with, with the tactical squad, so you didn't have three No, I mean on turn four. Ah. On turn, the way the oh, game no. was on turn four, I reckon what I should have done is stuck with defend four, but that would have put me behind in points. Because you were getting defend two, so it would have been... You would have gone up to ten points, I would have been on nine. I think <clears throat> going yeah. after the land route, surround it with the Acolytes, maybe do some damage with my Patriarch, and my... Would I have burnt... I could have burnt the CP on plus one to wound. Actually, if you would charge him, you would stop me from shooting. I wouldn't get to your warlords because you would be yeah. too far away from me. So you wouldn't have been able to shoot me. You wouldn't have had anything in range to assault me. Yeah. But we... then I would have been trapped in combat with it. Yes. Which is the only problem. Um, yeah, I would have been trapped. I might have killed it, but I probably wouldn't have wanted to. Yeah, probably you would get line breaker over here and 
depending on, on your uh, yeah. objectives. I, yeah, I could always have kept that CP and done just charged it with my characters. So or, brought, put them you, into reserve. Or you could charge them with the squad and daisy chain them so your uh, characters could stay over here trying to do yeah. whatever they want. <clears throat> so, I mean, we're not going to know what's happened now. Yeah. I, I thought I'd go for glory if I could get Warlord, kill a character, and uh, but yeah, I mean, you would have probably got... Had things gone right and I killed him, you probably still would have got Kingslayer. Definitely. Because you had so much firepower. There would be last cannon going underneath the, the building, straight yeah. into him. So my plan was to go on Objective 5 with the Acolytes, which was probably a mistake. Probably should have kept them on the board, but then I would have I would have had a long charge to get in. I see. I get plus one, but then I think I was still needing like an eight or a nine to get in, so... Dodgy. Anyway, I think we've talked enough. Thanks to Yarrow again for a good game. Thank you very much for inviting me again. One of these days I'm going to beat you, Yarrow. <laughs> One of these days I'm going to uh, film a battle report and I'm actually going to do okay <laughs> and win. But yeah, so yeah. Hope you enjoyed that. Uh, if you did, please remember to like and subscribe to the channel, which I always forget to tell people to the end, so if they're not watching, they may not hear. But yeah, uh, hope you enjoyed that and catch you next time.